Okay, so uh, let me do the demo of the freeform time assessment. Now, I haven't looked uh, ahead at the question, so it's possible that I'll get the one question that I've already done. If I get that, then I will reset the attempt and then do it again. <laughs> so we'll see. Let's cross fingers and hope that we don't get the one question that I've done before. And uh, as, as a reminder, 20 minutes is a really short amount of time. So make sure you're ready to focus on the question when you start the timer. Because you know, even I have to uh, make sure I don't dawdle and waste too much time. So with that, let me start. Good. That's not the question I've done, so I can do it. Um, or I should do it. Let's see if I can do it. I didn't study, so... Uh, yeah, that's a simple harmonic oscillator. Good. Uh, particle of mass can be used model. Is okay. Um, should that the wave function? All right. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't ask you to solve it, but I would ask you to verify that um, something is um, so. So uh, let me do it this way. So I would verify it by plugging in the solution to the time independent to sure our equation um, yeah because I didn't say how to do it yeah um, the uh, math work is uh, shown in attached to work it involves uh, taking two derivatives uh, with uh, respect to x and the rest is algebra uh, I'm giving this discretion because it's my constant thing uh, that I say to people. Um, your answer submitted within the time limit should give you me some indication of how to anchor it to the uh, work you attach. So that's why I'm, I'm following my own uh, advice. So you are given the solution, which is this. And the Schrodinger equation says minus h bar squared over 2m. The, this is a time independent Schrodinger equation plus V of X. Now I need to plug in V of X. So let me have a copy of that. Um, so V of X would be, let me use the, the last version. That's actually the more useful one. So the question is trying to help you. Um, so that is equal to the energy of the uh, state psi X. So only the energy eigenstates is a solution to this time independent, independent Schrodinger equation. So what I need to do is I need I mainly I need this quantity. I need the, the double time double position derivative to plug it in and do the rest of the calculation. So let me just uh, take the first two derivative of psi. I'm just gonna do that in my head, looking at it. Okay, I get a back. I get the exponential back. And I have to apply chain rule. So I'm taking the derivative of the outside, which gives me the same thing back. It's an exponential. And now I have to take the derivative of the inside. So it'll give me uh, minus a uh, factor of 2 comes down, 2m omega x over 2h bar, 2 cancel. And now we are done. Uh, I guess there isn't really simplifying this further. So let's uh, take the second derivative. So for second derivative, I just take the derivative of um, this expression, and I'm gonna have to use product rule. <laughs> yeah, it, it gets to be kind of long. Um, so a is fine. Now product rule. So I had to take derivative of this uh, exponential first. That I can kind of just uh, save a little bit of work by just uh, copying this. I already had that. So taking the derivative of exponential again, I would get exp minus m omega x squared over 2h bar times this factor that came down before minus m omega x over h bar and because there was already a factor of this from before it becomes that squared now for the product rule so i took the root of the first term times that now i have the product of the first term itself just just that not the derivative not that it looks different because, you know, it's exponential. And then I need to take the derivative of this, which will give me minus m omega over h bar, because it's just linear in x. All right, that looks good so far. So the rest is algebra. I need to plug in, plug this in. So I have, let me just uh, assemble everything together. Um, minus h bar squared over 2m. Um, 
all of this a and I think I can simplify a little bit. I can factor out exponential of minus m omega x squared over 2h bar because they're in both terms. And then for what's here, it'll be, let me uh, write that. It's just, uh, you know, distribute the square. It looks like that. Minus m omega over h bar. And then I need to do plus the potential. Plus. Uh, one half m omega squared uh, x squared. Oh, I made a mistake here. There's actually psi x is there. So I need to multiply that by the psi x, which is uh, a exponential of minus m omega x squared over 2 h bar. And um, all of this should equal energy level times psi x, which is a exponential of minus m omega x squared over 2h bar. Yeah, so looking at this, we get to cancel out some things. a cancels out, the exponential cancels out. So uh, it actually gives you an expression for energy. So according to this, uh, our energy level should be, um, energy level should be equal to, let's just write it all out. Um, so I'm going to uh, distribute h bar squared over 2m there. So I get um, the first term becomes minus uh, m omega squared x squared over uh, 2, h bar squared and m having been canceled out. Um, and then plus I get h bar, m's cancel out omega over 2, okay, plus we have uh, 1 half m omega squared x squared from here. So, oh, so this actually cancels out with that. And we get a constant value of h bar omega over 2. Oh, this must be the ground state. Did I already say it's ground state? Yeah, so it's ground state. So energy is equal to h bar times omega over 2. This must be the ground state. But, and I wouldn't give you actually any of the like excited states because this calculation becomes just so time consuming once it's any kind of level of complexity. Yeah, it took me eight minutes. I gotta go faster. Okay, wave function given in A, find the normalization constant so that, oh yeah, you gotta, um, so we set a integral of psi a x uh, from x equals minus infinity to x equals plus infinity and choose a um, a that would uh, make the integral equal to one um, so let me do that work here because uh, it's a long algebra or calculus I, I i don't have confidence that i can type it out fast enough um, so psi a is still this, and because it's a real function, the absolute value squared doesn't actually do anything complicated. So let me do negative infinity to infinity um, psi a x squared dx is equal to go from negative infinity to infinity a squared. I'm going to assume a is real, or I'll choose a real value of a real and positive, and then exponential of squared, so I get minus m omega x squared over h bar. Uh, because this thing squared, exponential algebra squared comes in as a factor here, and that would cancel that. So uh, that dx, okay, this is where I think we need uh, this definite integral formula. So they gave us this formula. Um, so let me write that down. Negative infinity to positive infinity e to the minus alpha x squared dx is equal to square root of pi over alpha. So here we are choosing to say our alpha is equal to m omega over h bar, not squared, just h bar. So with the choice of alpha, we can just directly apply this to get uh, a squared pulls out of the integral and evaluating the integral from negative infinity to infinity using this formula, it becomes square root of pi over the alpha, 
which is m omega over h bar. Yeah. So we want to say this is equal to 1 and then solve for a or solve for a squared first. a squared should be equal to uh, square root of doing the algebra in my head m omega over h bar pi so um, so that's uh, a squared of so a must be this thing m omega over h bar pi raised to the power of a one fourth so, uh, a is equal to m times omega divided by h bar times pi raised to the power of one fourth all right, good. Uh, let's see how much time. Nine minutes. Yeah. All right. Uh, plot below shows that for for ten things I did there. Okay, point out the features of the consistent with the correspondence principle. Uh, so that means um, at what this means is correspondence principle says that for high values of n, the behavior of quantum mechanical solution approaches the behavior of a classical solution. Uh, so um, one thing we would say, so we see that the particle um, is more likely to be found uh, around the classical turning point and that is consistent with the classical velocity velocity of the of the particle being lower near the turning point so the particle spends more time there uh, point out the features of equation correspondence principle uh, what else um, also the particle isn't very likely to be found uh, much beyond the classical turning point. Same feature as what one would expect classically, except that the quantum mechanical solution involves a little bit of tunneling from the wave uh, behavior. All right. Um, let's see, anything else? Um, I think that might be it. Um, at least, um, yeah, I think I've said the most important things. So, uh, got seven minutes. Let's look at this one. The plot below represents the measurements of the energy levels of the Upsilon meson. The first three have these energies. Okay. Um, assuming then strong force interaction at the bottom. All right. Um, all right. Um, so I'm. Um, so so this is the reasoning process I would go through. So yeah, it's kind of too advanced for this class. But what I'd say is, you know, I know the energy levels of the simple harmonic oscillator, m plus one half h bar omega, which means the difference between energy levels of adjacent levels is h bar omega so this is how i can interpret this plot let me just get a um, thing of that so what i can say is well looking at this plot i can kind of see the energy differences uh, from the given numbers um, the kind of the energy difference from here to here Delta E uh, one two, let's say, is you know ten thousand twenty three minus ninety four sixty, so that should be um, five sixty three MeV, I think. Uh, the five six three, I get that back. Yeah, I think that's good. And the next difference, which uh, ideally would have been the same, but here they are not. So we'll just roll with that. The difference in energy between levels 2 and 3 is uh, 10, 355 minus that. So that looks like a 3, 3, 2 MeV. Okay, so 
so I would like to say, uh, let's just use the average uh, energy difference. So you know, this is a complicated setup. It, it might, we are trying to model it as a simple harmonic oscillator. It's not actually simple harmonic oscillator. So we'll say, okay, the average is uh, 563 plus 332 divided by 2. That's uh, 895 divided by 2. So that's uh, 4. 5. I really shouldn't be doing this in my head. 4. Or. Um, is that 7.5? 2. 14. And I think it's 447.5. Four, and maybe so we'll say um, assuming that so the the average energy difference uh, between levels is delta is equal to 447.5 MeV interpreting this uh, as um, delta E in H bar omega C delta should work um, the angular frequency omega would be omega is equal to 447.5 MeV divided by h bar um, this i would just do it all from alpha so <laughs> it involves constants of 7.5 MeV per h bar So that would give me 6.80 times 10 to the 23. Uh, 6.80 times 10 to the 23. Uh, now it's not actually hertz. It's radians per second. It's, it's omega. Um, yeah, that's probably right. And yeah. All right, how much time? Three minutes. Yeah, so I think that's all right. Uh, let me use the remaining three minutes to attach my work. And then we'll submit it and we'll look at the, the answer key um, to make sure I didn't make any mistake. Um, I think I've shared this before that, um, you know, usually like topics we cover in mechanics, physics 4A, I don't need any prep. You can wake me up in the middle of the night, have me work on something. I, I can do fine. It's like a second nature to me. Uh, once you start getting into like physics 4B, physics 4C topic, um, many of them, if I didn't have chance to prepare ahead of time, I might make mistakes. I might uh, misremember certain things. That's entirely possible. And when it happens, it is embarrassing, and uh, not for just being wrong, but for you know not having prepared, not knowing myself well enough to know if I need to prepare or not. But. Uh, I think I've done correctly. We'll see. <laughs> uh, yeah, let me just uh, submit an end here. And then we'll look at the answer key. Yeah, that's all that. I can still change my work if I want. If I don't, save work and continue. I can still change my work if I reload here. There's add work thing here. So I'm going to go in as, a, uh, as an instructor so that I can bring up test the student's attempt and show you the answer key that way. Otherwise, um, I gotta do a lot more complicated things. This is easier. So let me go into the free form assessment for quantum mechanics. The only person who's done it so far is test the student. Great. And this is test the student's attempt there with the now answer key box. So I have done that. Uh, what does my answer key look like? Oh, I typed it all in. Didn't just scan my work. Yeah, so that's the work you need to go through. Gotta go to the calculus and the algebra and you get that. Yeah, good. And uh, um, yeah, I, that's what I said. Let's see, m omega pi h bar raised to the power. Great, yeah, that's the correct answer. I must have done this correctly. Uh, and let's see if I forgot anything here that's in the answer key. You know, this is kind of open-ended. I think as long as you say this, that's completely correct. Uh, the other things you might bring in that there's going to be individual variations. Yeah, because larger on turning point, more like, yeah, that's the important thing. Yeah. Good. I did that. Yeah. Good. Now, finally, did I get the right answer here? Let's check. Um, yeah. 
that. Yeah, yeah, good, good. 6.80, 10 to 23. Great. Yeah, that's correct. So, yeah, that's a, uh, um, so, you know, if I were grading, I would give it full credit, but I'm not grading, so it's fine. <laughs> Yeah, so that's uh, another demo of your quantum mechanics question dealing with a simple harmonic oscillator potential. And it's potentially challenging. The math you have to do for parts A and B take a long time. You kind of have to know exactly what you're doing. And uh, hopefully if you watch this, took some time to understand it, then that helped you if you got the exact same question as here. So, all right. Thank you.